Today, I'm going to compare the Tesla Roadster to the Holden Commodore SV6. It's like I'm on Top Gear. Ah, uh, Craig, you're meant to compare their carbon footprint. Carbon footprint? Ah, oh, damn. Sorry, Stig. I mean, Stib. That's going to fool the lawyers. So which car has the better carbon footprint? Well, this is a fully electric car with all the latest technology. And this is a good old-fashioned Aussie V6 petrol sports car. So the answer is obviously, it depends. The engine in this electric car produces zero carbon emissions. Whereas the petrol-driven Commodore produces heaps. But electric cars need to be recharged. And where does that charge come from? We're one and we're the if you're in Victoria and you charge your car from the grid, then our Tesla will have a higher carbon footprint than a Commodore. However, if you recharge from the grid in Tasmania, our electric car smashes the Commodore. The difference is where the power comes from. In Tasmania, 87% of electricity comes from renewable resources, like hydropower. Whereas in Victoria, 92% of power comes from brown coal, making it the dirtiest energy in the country. Even the tiny electric Mitsubishi IMEF, if charged on Victoria's power grid, is responsible for more carbon dioxide than your average small petrol car. But that only goes for Victoria. In every other state, the electric car is ahead of the petrol alternative. So does that mean you shouldn't drive an electric car if you're a hipster from Melbourne? Melbs. Melbs. Not quite. In every state of Australia, you can now pay extra to get your energy from sustainable sources. Meaning with an electric car, you can reduce your carbon footprint to practically zero. Even in Melbs. So when companies like Nissan say, no more CO2 emissions, they aren't quite lying, but it does depend. If there were more electric cars on the road, it could be good for our environment. But why aren't there? One of the first reasons is cost. Electric cars and hybrids tend to be more expensive than others. Another reason, and perhaps more important, is something called range anxiety. The worry that you'll run out of power and be stranded somewhere with nowhere to charge. Electric cars that have been sold in Australia have a range of between 70 right up to 390 kilometres. Although the range is less if you use your air conditioning or go up a hill or let a guy pretending to be the Stig drive. It's not that petrol cars don't run out, it's just that we have over 8,000 petrol stations to refuel if we start to run low. Whereas if you run out of charge away from home, there are currently only 100 charge stations in the whole country. We can just make it to Canberra. To overcome the problem of range anxiety, Holden's just released a new car. The Volt, which operates as a normal electric car for about 70 kilometres, which will cover most people's daily drive. But if you run out of charge, a small petrol engine kicks in. It doesn't actually run the car, but it charges the battery so you can keep going. It's kind of like running your solar power on a cloudy day with a small coal-fired sun. It means you lose your emission-free drive, but it does mean you can drive long distances if you need to. It's a step forward while still being anchored in the past. But if you want to know what the future looks like, According to Toyota, we'll all be driving widescreen TVs down the street, dancing and laughing like idiots, 
and posting annoying Facebook updates to our car doors. Electric cars might not be oversized phones yet, and they still got a way to go, but can they fulfill the major role of a car? Compensating for my tiny penis. Sure, Steve. Zero emissions, except in my pants. <laughs>